Hey everyone, hope your plans are doing great. I was on vacation for the past six to seven weeks. Now we are back and we were settling down. Three to four days have passed and it is time to check on my plants. So from the first glance, I can say majority of them are looking good. If you have watched this video where I talk about how I prepared my plants for vacation, I did some tricks and hacks to save my plants from dying. I also had a friend who occasionally came to water my plants like once in two weeks or so. Now let us see how they're doing. Let us start with the plants under my grow lights. The plants that are in Lekka are doing okay, actually really good, except ZZ plant and the ficus benjamina cuttings which I started close to my vacation before I left. So it's just coming off just like that, it was not inserted properly. That might be the reason why it got dried off and there is still water in this container. So nothing has happened, the Lekka has not helped it and also the same case with the ficus benjamina. But I'll try both of these plants again in Lekka. But other than that, all the other plants are doing very well. So let us take a closer look. This is my Enjoy Photos. It has a new growth and also one more new leaf is coming out. Next is my Photos. So this Photos was a bit problematic right from when I started in Lekka. I don't know why. We had to flush out the Lekka balls. But as if you can see here, yeah, there is some buildup of mold inside. This is my Syndapsis pictus. You can see some thrips in this plant. So I'll be isolating this one. But yeah, there is a new growth over here. So my friend came here and watered these plants maybe two weeks back. But still there is water in this container. I don't have to water too much. That means Lekka is doing pretty well when you are away. So it retains more moisture without overwatering them. Here is my ivy. It has got a lot of roots formed. And there is also new growth. I can see there is some spider mite attack on it, so I'll have to uh, isolate these two plants. Next, I have my Philodendron hastatum. If you had seen my video on how I started my plants in Lekka, this had just two leaves, but in the last two months, it has given a lot of new growth. And there is one more over here, one more hastatum. This did not have any leaf, it was just putting out a new growth and the leaf has unfurled and there is one more that is thriving in Lekka that is my Raphidophora tetrasperma there is a lot of new growth I can see that all these are new leaves so in short all my plants in Lekka are doing very well they were able to retain more moisture for more than two weeks yeah and it has also put out a lot of new growth so these plants are really doing well now let us check out the plants inside these plastic covers. This was a simple hack which I shared in this vacation prep video. Do watch that if you want to know more about it. Let's now open these covers. This is my Phytonia or the nerve plant. Look how beautifully well it has grown. I've never had luck with Phytonia in my apartment. Until I found this back method, this has been my friend and has helped me to save this Phytonia and I've never seen it this happy. So I'll keep it in these bags until the end of winter and maybe shift it to a terrarium or so because my apartment cannot provide the humidity that it requires. This is my string of turtles. This has the same story as my Phytonia. It was struggling in my apartment but once it has been moved to these bags, they've never been this happy. So string of turtles, I don't know, I've not seen it being classified as a humidity loving plant but in my experience they love their soil to be moist and their environment to be humid. So that is why they did well inside these bags. So if you are struggling with any humidity loving plants, try this method. Pack them in a bag and wait for a couple of weeks till they grow back. This is my Philodendron scandens. They are also doing well. They have a lot of leaves now. But the leaves are not big enough because I think it is not getting the light it needs because it has been inside these covers. And I also see there are some thrips on these plants. So I will be treating them for thrips and will keep these plants open. Next is my Philodendron Brazil. Same as my Scandens, the leaves are not becoming big. So I'll water them and keep it open for some days. Here is a watermelon peperomia, although it doesn't look like that. This had no leaves at all. 
and now there are a few leaves although it looks a bit wilted because it is thirsty so i'll be watering them now the plants inside my bag has not been watered for a while now the soil is a bit dry so if you are using this method make sure you don't pour water into the pot but instead spray it otherwise there is a chance for mold development inside the bags remember the soil should be just moist enough but not too wet now let me show you some of the plants that are not doing well in these bags this is my ivy as you can see all the leaves have dried up the soil is also dry uh, i'll remove all the dead leaves water the plant and see if the plant can come back let's see how that goes the next one is a pothos so this one is also not doing well it is not worse as the ivy but still it is not doing well because it has some thrips attack i think i'll not try to rescue this plant i have other pothos with me and it is too hard to rescue a plant from thrips it's too much work so i'll just throw it off probably so what do we have on my next rack? There are some casualties as well as there are some plants that are doing well. Succulents are doing well. This is my moon cactus. This is another succulent. I forgot its name. And this is my bureau steel. This has gotten big. This was only around this big before I left and this has grown pretty big. It looks so beautiful. And there is a dried cutting over here. So maybe I'll keep it as such and try to propagate it. And this was my spider plant. The soil is too dry for it. Spider plant, if you know, it likes moist soil. The, so the soil mixture is a little bit on the drier side. But still there is some new growth coming, if you can see that. So I'll just keep it as such. Maybe water it. Remove all the dead leaves and hope for the best. There is one more spider plant. This was propagated from this one, I don't know, last year or so. There is some drying of leaves, but other than that, it is doing well. This is my jade plant. This was not doing well before, even before my vac vacation. This was attacked by mealybugs. I can still see some mealybugs over here. So maybe I'll try propagating. This doesn't look good at all. Here I have some more plants under this grow light. These are more casualties. The soil mix was too dry for them. This is my photos. So I'll just remove all the dry parts. And water it. This was an enjoy photos. I think it still has the potential to revive because the stems have not grown brown. It is still green. But even if it doesn't revive back, I have a spare from my liquor propagation. So this is the one. So as you can see, this is the clear evidence of how Lekka is doing well in my absence than the ones in soil. This is again my spider plant. The same case with the other one. The soil was too dry for them. I should have potted it in a more moisture retaining mix. But it did a good job for us in catching all the fungus gnats. Can you see how many were there? Since it is under low light, even if it is winter, it requires regular watering. My soil mixture was also not moisture retaining. It's what happened there, but I think they will come back. I will also try to propagate them. If you know the leafless node propagation that I did, I have done a video on it where you can propagate such nodes without leaves in soil. If you want to check that out, you can do that. I, I might be trying that with this plant. Alright, so that was about the plants under my grow lights. Now let us move on to my living room. This is the corner that gets maximum amount of light in my house. It's a west facing window and all the plants here are doing well. So that's my ficus, Benjamina. So if you remember, we pruned it just before my vacation and it is putting out a lot of new growth even during this winter. Then I have a pothos climbing up this lamp. It's also doing pretty good. It's putting out a lot of new growth. Look at the size of it growing under the LED lamp. I have a ZZ plant here. If you can see, there is a new growth over there. Coming to this corner, I have a Raphidophora tetrasperma. This is also doing pretty okay. It's a bit on the dry side. I think the soil has dried up. There are a couple of uh, brown leaves on it. So I'll remove that. But other than that, the plant is doing well. And there is also new growth on it. So all of this needs a little bit of watering. So I'll be wa watering them now. Coming on to the plants on this table. Most of them are doing okay, but we also have some plants which have wilted and 
are showing some kind of distress so let's take a closer look at it here all the sunset areas are doing okay as expected they simply will not give up i also have a new growth so i've noticed in my home in my present apartment the sansevierias and dracenias put out new growth in winter when it is too cold outside i don't know why this is my fawn so if you remember i had kept a thread to this plant to wick water onto the soil soil is moist it is not too dry but still the leaves have dried up but this was the case last winter also and the plant came back during the summer so i think it has to do with the humidity inside the home so that could be the reason of it drying up but there are still some good leaves on it so as i said this this was the case last winter too so i'm not very much worried about it so this will come back for sure in summer i'll just clean it up and water it the plant looks it looks a lot cleaner and i'll move it to my kitchen where it was onto the Dracenias, they're also doing okay, just like the Sansevierias, they're just fine. The Hoya is also doing completely okay, there's some dried leaves here and there, but other than that, it is fine. You can see some white spots on it, I have to check if it is a mealybug or not. Yeah, I think there are some mealybugs here and there, I have to clean it up before it spreads to the other plants. Next, we have my Pelia Piperomia. This one is the propagated one. I think this is doing okay. This was like this before I left for vacation as well. As I said, it's, uh, it was on the stable along with the other plants with not much light, therefore, the smaller leaves. But this will come back in summer. And then I have here a uh, Ficus Lirata or fiddly fig yeah so this one has got a dried leaf i think it lost most of its uh, lower leaves but that is to be expected because it was not receiving this one ficus needs a lot of light and this was not getting enough light you can see here there is a new growth this is a new leaf and now i'll be watering it maybe some of my plants will move under the grow light and now to the disappointing part this can you guess the plant this was my Oxalis triangularis, so it dried up completely. I should have asked my friend to take this plant along with her and keep it in our home so that she can water this frequently, but that did not happen. So I just completely forgot about it. Here, this is the bulb from which the Oxalis triangularis comes out. So I can, I think I can already see a new growth on it. Can you see that? So even if you have an Oxalis triangularis and it dried off, don't just throw the entire pot you can save this bulb and the plant will just uh, grow back if it gets all the conditions that it needs next i have a synthapsis pictus it's thriving beautifully well compared to the other plants and there's also new growth can you see that now to another disappointment this was my pride and joy my anthurium clarinarium and it has a yellow leaf oh my god now this is a disappointment but not to worry there is a new growth on it i know i had so many fans for this plant also in my instagram there are so many admirers of this plant but i'll try to make it happy from now on so now let me water all the plants This is the amount of dead and dried leaves from my plant collection after a seven week vacation. That was a quick tour of my plants and how they are doing after my vacation. There are some casualties but majority of them are doing just fine. When we are away for six to seven weeks, that too in winter, this is the minimum we can expect, right? Big thank you to my friend who kindly agreed to take care of my plants during my absence. It was a huge task list I gave her and she did a great job. So thank you so much. Also do check out my video on how I prepared my plants for vacation where I show some tips and hacks to save your plants from dying so you might find it helpful. Now to the exciting part. Let me show you what plant stuffs I could bring back from India after my vacation. So I got some plants, not many. I, ha I wanted to bring a lot of plants but I couldn't because towards the end of my vacation we got really busy. The first one is a philodendron moonshine, I guess. This was potted in soil so I 
uprooted it, cleaned the roots off and covered it in a wet tissue paper and put it in a Ziploc cover. So that is one way you can bring your plants during travel and it survived. It is doing pretty well. I have just put it in water so that it can get adjusted to the environment in my home and then I'll pot it in soil or maybe liquor. This is an Indian borage or a Mexican mint. This has some medicinal values as well so when you get sick you can use it. I've put it in water just like my philodendron but I see some rotting there and it has not rooted as well so I might cut it off and put it directly in soil and see what happens. So yeah that is my second plant. So those were the plants that I could bring back from India. I could also bring some seed packets. So if you have been watching my videos for a while, you know that I'm into vegetable gardening and I'm trying to convert my small balcony space into a vegetable garden. To get some Indian vegetables here, we have to visit the Indian grocery store and it is very expensive there. It is not found in the local supermarket. This year I want to grow more Indian vegetables in addition to the normal ones that we grow here and see how they do. These are the seeds that I got from India. So I have some varieties of eggplant over here, three varieties, some chilies, the normal green chili and a bird's eye chili. This is supposed to be really hot. Then a beans variety, an okra, beetroot, cauliflower, bitter gourd, watermelon and some red spinach. If I can get them growing on my space then I can become more self-sufficient. So yeah, this year is going to be exciting. That's all for this video. This was a short update from my side. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next. Bye and take care.